Hello again. And today we're back down the river, just a very small distance from where I live. Um, it's a lovely part of the world to stay here in Exton. And uh, we're going to have a look at um, how to take a photograph using one of Lee's big stoppers. Um, so for anybody that hasn't used neutral density filters before, um, we're going to use the big stopper today by Lee Filters and uh, going to show you how to use it, how to set it up, what to, um, what to think about when you're doing that photograph and uh, yeah, we're going to take a picture of, of the river and the weir. Um, it's a beautiful morning, it's, it's early at the moment, it's, uh, it's just gone six o'clock and the sun is just coming up. There's some amazing colours um, hitting some of the trees, um, particularly over there where the, uh, the trees are just sort of coming to life on the, uh, the left-hand side from the sun, which is over there. I'm also surrounded by wild garlic, which, um, I don't know, this time, of the, this time of the year just smells absolutely amazing. Um, and it's everywhere. And you need to work out if you can cook with it. You probably can, just dig it up and cook it. I'm going to sell a bit to Gordon Ramsay. And uh, right, so let's get on. Let's get uh, let's go take a look at this uh, at this scene. So, first of all, what I'm going to hope to try and do is I've got my camera set up on the tripod just here, um, using a Gitzo tripod. Um, I've got my leaf filters in a in a lovely pouch just there. I've got my trusty Nikon D850, and on the front, I've got a Tamron 15 to 2.5. On the front of that lens. I've got a Nissi filter holder, not a Lee filter holder, a Nissi filter holder. And the reason for that is quite simple. I prefer the Nissi filter holder because you can take this off and put it on without taking the lens off the camera. Now the, the Lee filter holder clamps on from both sides onto the front of the lens. And, uh, and to do that, you need to actually take the lens off the camera. So for that purpose alone, for taking this off and taking it on in the field without having to take your lens off and potentially get all rubbish and dirt in your camera, I prefer the Nissi holder. I'm not sponsored by Nissi and I'm not sponsored by Lee. All this stuff is paid for out of my good old hard cash, so this is not an advert for anybody. What we're going to try and do today, the reason I've got the wide angle lens on, is because we're going to try and get the water coming down over the weir. I'm going to try and smooth all that out and get it all nice and milky using a, uh, a neutral density filter. But also, we've got the water coming in from, from this side, down the salmon steps. I'm going to hope to get that so we get kind of a V-shaped water through the, through the frame. And uh, hopefully we'll get it all nice and smoothed out and milky and, and looking kind of surreal. So, what are we going to do? Well, first of all, the very first thing we need to do is work out our normal exposure. So we'll do that, we'll do that just now. We've got it in manual mode. So we'll just work out what our exposure is. Here we go. So a quick flick around. I'm gonna, we're gonna be running at about F10. There we go, and it's 2.5 of a second. There we go. ISO is gonna be plonked nicely on 64. Perfect. And that gives us an image a little bit like this. And as you can see in that image, we can, we can quite clearly see the water, the, the, the particles of water, the droplets, and it's kind of frozen. It's not frozen completely. There is a, still a little bit of movement in that water, but it, it's, it's kind of a normal picture you would expect to take using any, any camera. Now we've set that exposure up. Okay, so now what we want to do is as soon as we focus, and we'll focus on these rocks just here in the foreground, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flick my focus mode onto manual. And that's really important because when we put our dark piece of glass, our neutral density filter, in front of this lens, the camera will struggle to focus. In fact, it won't be able to focus using a big stopper. So the first thing it'll do is it'll start to hunt backwards and forwards for that focus point effectively losing our focus point that we've just set. So to stop that happening, we're going to flick it onto manual. The second thing we're going to do before we take this photograph is we're going to cover our viewfinder. Now, there's a, there's a number of ways to do this. If you've got uh, a certain type of camera, you, you may have a little button on the front there, and I can just flick that across. 
There we go. And that puts a little aperture across the inside of the viewfinder. What that does is it stops light going in the viewfinder and potentially going round the pentaprism and around the side of the, the mirror that slips up and hitting your sensor. Because on long exposures, you want to minimise the light going into your camera. So some cameras have a little button on the, side, on, the, on the top there. I've just flipped mine across. If you haven't got one of those, you can buy a little blanking, a little blanking plate that fits over your viewfinder. You can get those from Amazon. I'll put a link in the, uh, in the notes down below. Or what a lot of people do, and this works equally well, is a nice blob of blue tack. Just squish it onto your uh, viewfinder and no light will get in there. I've seen that done many, many times and it's, uh, it, it is quite a popular solution. So we've got our camera roughly set up. Next thing we need to do is get our Lee filter out. So here's our big stopper. And uh, first of all, we'll make sure it's nice and clean. And not, that's preparation for you. I normally have a cleaning cloth in my pocket. One second, I'll just run over here into my bag. Cleaning cloth. Always make sure that these filters are nice and clean front and back now you know the back side because it's got a um, a little foam edge to it and that's once again is to stop light sneaking around the filter being a bit naughty bit of a sneaky move and what we're going to do now is we're just going to push that in there nice and squeezy come on me little fella in you go and push that down, there we go, in place. That's going to be completely dark now. The next challenge we've got is the fact that our exposure has now completely changed. Of course, we're on manual, um, but the spoke exposure we used a moment ago is now going to be completely useless to us. The next thing we need to do is work our exposure, because obviously we dialed that our exposure in a few moments ago, and to do that, we're going to need our phone. Now, Lee filters, all filters, they come with a little card um, that, that allows you to translate the exposure. It's normally the first thing I lose. Um, so, there is an app you can get on your phone. Made by Lee filters. There's lots of other companies that do, do the app as well, but I just use Lee one because it is about as simple as you can get. And we can just quickly work out what the exposure is going to be. And for this exposure, it's going to be 30 seconds. Which is handy because 30 seconds is the maximum that most cameras allow you to set the, expo the, the shutter speed for without buying an additional piece of kit. Um, we'll talk about that in another video. So let's just dial that in, 30 seconds. There we go, 30 second exposure. And we're ready to go. So all I need to do now is press the button. Now while that's doing that, that's going to take 30 seconds, just let's have a look at this app because this app is really quite clever. The three most popular filters by, by Lee are the Little Stopper, the Big Stopper and their new Super Stopper. And they give you six stops, 10 stops and 15 stops of, um, of light compensation. So how to use this app is really simple. You select the filter you're using, so we've just hit the button in the middle, which is the 10 stop big stopper. And they're using the wheel on the left hand side, we just move that around. So in our case, we were, we were there, 1 30th of a second. And that gives me 30 seconds. And you can see that's, the, that's the, on, the, on the right hand side. And at the bottom it says 1 30 is 30 seconds. We were previously on 1 25th of a second and 40, but I actually changed that slightly just to bring it down to within my um, to within my range of the camera because I haven't got my little adapter today. So that picture should have should have taken. Indeed it has. Let's have a quick look at that. And there we go. So as we can see, a nice milky water, nicely smoothed out where it's not white. Where it is white, it's all nice and milky and, and looking like we've got plenty of movement in that. Uh, in that frame and there's a few bugs around here so I'm just getting attacked by some bugs um, and yeah we've got the two sides of the water coming down just as uh, just as we wanted to achieve 
So that's how we use a Lee Big Stopper. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give us, uh, give us some comments down below. Let us know what you think. Um, give us some ideas for the next video you want to see. Um, if, you, if you've enjoyed it, then you know, just, just hit that thumbs up and just let us know that you've enjoyed it. If you'd like to be, uh, be aware of other videos that we make, then down there in the corner, there's a, excuse me, there is a subscribe button. Please press it and join us at Chorley Photographic Society. Until next time, that's, uh, that is Bunny's video finished. It's now uh, quarter past six and uh, yeah, what a great morning. See you next time.